Welcome to your first lesson for Algebra 2, Lesson 1.1, Patterns and Expressions. And I will be your teacher, Kim Robison. The first thing we're going to do is talk about what you're going to learn in this lesson. So the objective for this lesson is to be able to identify and describe patterns. And as we learn how to identify and describe patterns, we have some vocabulary that goes with that. First of all, as review, a variable is a symbol, usually a letter, like x, y, or z, that represents one or more numbers. A numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that contains only numbers and operations. So there are no variables in a numerical expression. An algebraic expression, however, does have variables. A couple more vocab words. A constant is a quantity whose value does not change. So like 4 is a constant because 4 is just 4. It's a quantity that's not changing. A variable quantity is a quantity whose value changes or varies. And usually a variable quantity has a variable. Like 4 times x is going to change depending on what x is. So give me a different example of a constant. You may have said negative 6 or 5. Provide an example of a variable quantity. You could have said z or 4x plus 1. Those are variable quantities. On to the next step. We're going to identify a pattern. Now ignore colors here. So we start with a triangle, then a square, then a pentagon, and then a hexagon. So we're going to look at the figures from left to right. What is the pattern? And what would the next figure in the pattern look like? Well, there's some identifying things. We've named them, but there's other qualities to each of these shapes. First of all, a triangle has three sides, square four, pentagon five, hexagon six. So the pattern is we increase each side each um, shape side by one. So if we have a hexagon as the last one, then the next one should have how many sides? Seven, and we call that a heptagon. So we would draw a shape that has seven sides. Using our new vocab, so we have numerical expressions and algebraic expressions. So as we look at these four expressions, we're going to use an N for numerical and an A for algebraic to identify these as one or the other. Now if you recall, I, I told you that a numerical expression only has numbers and operations. So which expression here is numerical? Only this one here. 5 subtract the quantity 3 plus 1. An algebraic expression has variables. So as we look at the 8x minus 7, that has a variable, so it's algebraic. And the same with these other two down here. Write your own numerical and algebraic expression. We can also take a pattern and make a table so that we can predict. Um, so let's take a look at this table. Um, if we have an input of 1, meaning that in our first figure, if we look right here, this is our first figure, our output is 2. So in our first figure, we have 2 blocks. In the second figure, we have 4 blocks. In our third figure, we have 6 blocks, and so on. In our fourth figure, we have 8. Our input is how many or what step we're on. So our first term, our second term, our third term, our fourth term. And the output is what, what the figure actually is. So what we're going to do is looking at our input and output values, we want to figure out what numerical or, or um, operation is happening to the input values to get the output values. So starting here, what would we have to do to 1 to get to 2? Well, we could add 1, 1 plus 1 would be 2, or we could multiply 1 by 2 to get 2. So we can have 1 plus 1 or 1 times 2. Those are our options. 
Now if I take that first option and add 1 to the input of 2, 2 plus 1, do I get the output of 4? No, we do not. So we're not adding 1 as the operation. So now let's check the multiply by 2 as an option. If I take my input of 2 and multiply it times 2, do I get 4? We do. If I take 3 and multiply it times 2, I get 6. If I take 4 and multiply it times 2, I get 8. So what would I have to do to n to get an algebraic expression for the output? Well, we would have to multiply by 2. So 2 times n is an expression that represents this pattern. Here's another couple of input-output tables, and we're again going to try to identify what the pattern is. So taking a look at the one on the right, what could we do to 1 to get 3? And we want to find that same consistent pattern all the way down. So I could take 1 and add 2. 1 plus 2 would be 3. But also 1 times 3 is 3. So we could be adding 2 or multiplying by 3. So let's check both of those. So if I take each input value and add 2 to them, do we get the output value? So on the top, 1 plus 2, that's 3. 2 plus 2, that's 4. 3 plus 2, that's 5. And 4 plus 2, that's 6. So continuing that pattern, I would have to take 5 plus 2 and get 7. So there's one of our missing blanks. And what would the expression be for n? So if I gave you any input, let's just say 50, what would the output be for this table? Well, the pattern is that we're adding 2. So it would be 52 if the input was 50. The expression for n would be n plus 2. That's the general rule for the pattern. Now let's take a look at the one on the right. It's a little bit more tricky. We might be a little bit more um, creative in our, in our reasoning here. Okay, so first of all, if we have 1, what would we have to do to 1 to get 4? Well, we could add 3, so we could do 1 plus 3, but we could also do 1 times 4. So let's start with that first one. If I add 3 to the input of 2, do I get 7? Well, no, we don't, which means that rule is incorrect. All right, so now let's try the, the other rule, and that was multiplying times 4. So if I take 2 times 4, do I get the 7? Well, we, that doesn't work either, because 8 is not equal to 7. So we're going to think of now a combination of those two things. What two things could happen in order to get this output? Hmm. What if we multiplied by 2 and then added 2? So it would be 1 times 2 plus 2. 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 plus 2 is 4. Well, that works for the first one. Let's try it for the second one. Second one. So I'm going to take the 2 times 2 and then add 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. Mm, that's not 7. So that didn't work. So we need to change our numbers a little bit. What if we multiply by 3 and then add 1? Let's see what that looks like. 1 times 3 plus 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus 1 equals 4. Okay, that worked. 2 times 3 plus 1. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 1 is 7. That worked. Now let's do the 3. 3 times 3 plus 1. 9 plus 1 is 10. That worked. 4 times 3 plus 1. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. So it looks like we've identified something, and the, the pattern was that we're going to multiply by 3 and then add 1. So we're going to take 5 times 3 
and then add 1. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. So that value is 16. So we're going to do the same thing with the n. We're going to take n and multiply it by 3. And n times 3 is 3n, and then we're adding one more. So we get an algebraic expression of 3n plus 1 to represent this value. Now we're going to identify a pattern by making a table. So as we look at this table, we first need to identify coordinates of these points. So if you remember, we're going to um, identify the, the points um, using the direction. So you have to go left or right and then up and down. So the x-coordinate for that red dot is 0, and then it's up 5. So we have 0, 5. The blue dot is 1, 3. The green dot is 2, 1. And the purple dot is 3, negative 1. This first list is our input values. So in a table, we have 0, 1, 2, 3. The output values are 5, 3, 1, negative 1. So what would we have to do to 0 to get to 5? Well, we could add 5. What would we have to do to 1 to get 3? Hmm. It looks like we're subtracting 3 every, or subtracting 2 every time. So if we look here, as 0 goes to 1 to 2 to 3, 5 goes down to 3. If we subtract 2 again, we get 1, and if we subtract 1 again, we get negative 1. So the pattern is subtract 2. We're going to do the same thing in the second table. First, we need our coordinates of our points. So the red dot is 2, 0. So we're to the right 2 and up or down 0. The blue dot is 3, 1. Then we have 4, 2 and 5, 3. All right, so as we look at these values here, they go up by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And on the other side, our pattern is going 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. So what's happening is we are adding 1. And that is the pattern. All right, we are finished. And um, expect homework tomorrow when you get to class. And um, don't forget to have your notes ready to go.